Hi, my name is James with British Customs. Today we're going to be installing our competition headers on this 2022 Street Twin. To start, we need to pull the seat off so we can pull the tank back and access our O2 sensors. So take the seat off. Before we slide our tank back, we want to remove our battery negative terminal. Always remove the battery negative terminal first using your 10 millimeter socket. And then you can remove the positive side. For this job, we don't need to remove the whole battery. So we just need to remove the negative. Now with our 10 millimeter wrench, eight millimeter socket, take this bolt out. Now we're gonna move the tank back. You wanna protect your stuff over here. So either some rags, a block of wood or something, just to rest the tank on. Slide it back. Okay. Next, we want to remove this wire keeper here. Use our T30 bit. All right, now to remove the O2 sensor, if we get this white plug, push it out of the clip there. So you have a little room to work. You have on top of your O2 sensor wire, which you can tell it's that one. If you just pull on that and it wiggles, you know you're getting the right one. If you push in, you can pull that up. And then you have another clip under here. You just want to push that up and unplug that. Now we can pull that out that way. You don't want to try and leave this plugged in and pull your pipe down and pull the O2 sensor out like that because you can really damage the O2 sensor by twisting the wires up like that. And then you have to twist it back to put it into the new pipe. You really want to unplug it so you can put it in, take it out properly. So now we'll go to the left side of the bike. Again with our T30, we we'll take those two screws out. Let that hang right there. Now we want to get these two clips that hold our clutch cable on. If you just give them a good squeeze, they come out. Sometimes you get lucky, they come right out, and other times they give you a real hard time, and you may even break one, so you may just have to go down to the local Triumph dealer and just order another one. Like this one. <laughs> there we go. Now we can pull this back piece out. Just like the other side, if we get this one out of the way, you can now see our O2 sensor plug right there. So again, we want to go over here and Push in on that tab so we can lift it out. And then we pull up on this tab. Pull that out. Okay. 
Now we want to remove this heat shield. Use your five millimeter Allen hex bit. Sometimes helps if you have a ball Allen. Makes it a little easier to get in there. Now we gotta remove, we don't have to remove, just loosen this clamp with our 10 millimeter wrench. Just start turning it. We don't have a, a good swing on it here, so it takes a quarter turn at a time. Not a good angle either. Now we need to take these flange nuts off. They're a 12 millimeter socket. So now you just wanna pull it out. Now you just want to remove your old exhaust gasket and stick a rag or something in there just to make sure nothing falls in there until we get our exhaust on. Now we're going to remove the muffler section. I'm going to put a 12 millimeter wrench in the back, a 12 millimeter socket. We have our 10 millimeter on the clamp here. Now using your 12 millimeter wrench, put some pressure down on the foot peg here to keep the bolt inside from moving. Really helps if you have a ratcheting wrench for this, makes it a little easier. Pull your foot peg out. Now you wanna just turn it so you can get it out of there. A little couple wiggles, take it right out. Using our five millimeter Allen hook bit. Now with a 10 millimeter wrench, I'm gonna just loosen this clamp. That should be pretty loose. Now with our 12 millimeter deep socket, I'm gonna remove the exhaust flange bolt. Nuts. can just pull it outward. That's it. Now you want to take out your old gasket. We do not recommend reusing these gaskets. You always want to put a new exhaust gasket in. Stuff a rag in there for now. Now we want to remove this bolt here. 
using our 12 millimeter open end wrench. You can get it up back there in the 12 millimeter socket. With our 10 millimeter socket, we can take off this clamp or just loosen it. You don't have to take it all the way off. Now using our 12 millimeter wrench, we're gonna loosen this nut. We're gonna put pressure on the foot peg here to keep that bolt from spinning. If you don't put pressure, you can see the bolt just spins around. You'll be there all day trying to loosen that. Put some pressure on it and it tightens up. Pull the foot peg out. Now we just turn that in, pull it out. So now we're going to get this rectifier out of the way. Use our eight millimeter socket and take these screws from the bracket off. So now to remove the rectifier, we just want to push down on this tab here and push down on the regulator rectifier. Do the same on the other side. This just gives us more access to do what we need to do. So now we're going to remove the top radiator mount bolt. It's an eight millimeter socket. So now we have this T30 torque screw in there that has this cover there. We want to get that out of the way which again will just give us better access where we have to go. Okay. So now with your 14 millimeter open end wrench, you slide in from the top, you can get to the nut inside there. So with our 14 millimeter wrench holding that nut in the back, we have an eight millimeter Allen bolt here. I'm using an impact, you don't really have to. It's not crazy tight. So now we want to come in from this side. You want to make sure you come out in front of your brake line. Don't come in the back of the brake line because you won't be able to get to the angle of the, the bolt without really prying hard on the brake line. So you just push it in slightly there and you can get right to your bolt. Then we have our eight millimeter Allen. I like using an impact gun. 
This is nice and handy, 3 8 drive, Milwaukee. It's a brushless impact gun. And uh, what this is good for is because you're not swinging around and you won't hit the tank or anything. But don't use this for install. This is only for removal. So now we want to remove the side cover. Just pull it out. It's held in with some rubber grommets. So now we want to unplug the side stand switch. You got that little tab right there. If you're like me and you don't have nice long nails, you got to use a little something to pry that plug down. So now we want to remove this foot peg bracket. This is our six millimeter Allen hex bit. Now we want to remove this screw, which is holding this guide for this wire that goes to our side stand switch. These are T25 Torx. So now we can remove this wire. Kind of push it down. Lay that there. Next, we're going to remove the engine mount bolt here. We want to also, while we're here, unplug the horn because that's going to come off with the frame. We're going to use our 17 millimeter open end wrench from the inside here. Grab the nut and our 16 millimeter socket on the outside. If you haven't already done so, unplug the horn. So now we need to remove these two bolts down here. You don't need a wrench for the backside because that's like a double nut, won't spin. Use your eight millimeter Allen hex bit. So before we take this bolt all the way out, you want to make sure you're holding the frame rail up so it doesn't drop. You also want to have a shop rag, a cloth or something handy. So as you come down, you want to make sure you don't just drop it down because you have wires that are attached in the back here, attached to the fan. So you just want to bring it down and put a little rag in there to Keep that from getting scratched up. And just let it hang out right there. All right, now we're gonna remove the engine mount on the right side. Put our 17 mil in there, 16 mil.
So now we need to remove this bolt here. Got an eight millimeter Allen hex bit and a 14 millimeter nut in the back. And as you take this apart, you want to leave the bolt through there so that the frame section doesn't fall down. Now while you're holding the frame, you can pull the bolt down. So this right side is gonna come off all the way. There's a little grommet under here that's holding the radiator up. So you just gotta pull it down from there and then you can pull it out. So now we need to remove these two bolts here. It's a 12 millimeter socket. Want to hold the cat and take this one out. So now to remove the cat bracket, we've got three bolts right here and here. 12 millimeter socket. Okay. So now we can start putting our frame rails back on. Start with these two screws in the back. As we're putting this into the front, you got the little grommet, and this piece goes up into it. You want to make sure that those are lined up right as you go in. Just throw that bolt in there, and now you can let go of it. So now, when we're putting this bolt in, it's easiest to start by getting the nut in the back so you can hold it in place and then thread the screw through. So now that's on. Now we're gonna put this nut here. And we're just putting everything on loose at first. And once all the bolts are in place, we can tighten everything down. Now we can put our double nut back in the flat portion is going to go up against the frame. It helps to push one of the bolts out. Just start the one with your eight millimeter Allen wrench socket. Screw the other one in. So now we can put the right side frame rail up. I'm gonna make sure you're getting your pin and your grommet aligned properly. Okay, so the, in the back and in the top, they go to the inside of the frame. <clears throat> you also wanna just take care that you're not pinching any wires as you put this stuff back together. I'm just gonna put that there temporarily while I put this one in. Just get the nut on the back side of that. I can come back here, throw that screw in, put the nut on the back. So now we wanna get this nut back here. I'm 
Let's get it lined up so we can get our screw in. Okay, we're gonna start tightening this nut here. We're gonna get our 14 millimeter open end. Get it on the nut. With our eight millimeter Allen. Tighten that up. I'm going to go to forty Newton meters on this. Now we're going to do this one here, 14 millimeter, 8 millimeter Allen. Do this one in the middle here, a 17 millimeter wrench and a 16 millimeter socket. This goes to 105 Newton meters. Do the other side. So now we're going to tighten this one up here. Our 14 millimeter wrench. Our 8 millimeter Allen. I'm going to tighten these two up. We don't need a wrench on the back. Just need our eight millimeter Allen. Torque them down to 40 Newton meters. I'm going to tighten down that engine bolt. Our 17 millimeter on the nut. 16 millimeter on the bolt. Go to 105 Newton meters. So now we're going to run our side stain switch. Back up, we got the wire coming in up here. You got this little channel that we pulled it out of. I'm gonna push it back into. I'm gonna plug it back in. That's it. So we can put our wire guide back on. Just spiral it through into place.
the T25. So now we can plug our horn back in. Now we're gonna put the rectifier back in. Can only go one way. Put our screws in. Do your eight millimeter socket. Start tightening that up. Go to the other side. Put this screw in. Your eight millimeter socket. Stick this bolt in here. Your eight millimeter socket. Tighten it up. We're going to put our O2 sensors on. We want to make sure we have a little anti seize on the threads so they don't get galled up in there. Seventeen millimeter wrench. Tighten it down. Next one. So now we're going to put our exhaust gaskets in. And a lot of people wonder how do you keep the exhaust gasket in because they're kind of a loose fit in there and they just want to fall out. So what you could do is just put a couple little dots of grease. When we talk about grease, we're not talking about just a lubricant. We want a thick grease that's going to make it stick. If you just put like an oil on there, it's just going to fall right back out. You don't need a lot, just a couple little dabs to hold it in place till you get the exhaust in there. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. A couple dots of grease. She stays in place. I'm gonna start by sliding that bottom tube, cross tube in, get the top in. Then we can put the flanges on. The one that goes on the right side of the bike here, it's the right side when you're sitting on the bike. This is the upper right, is the one with the slot for the O2 sensor. The other one's marked lower right, that's for the bottom side. There's nuts on loose first. All right, so now that we have the right side loosely installed, we want to put the left side on. 
Before we do that, we want to make sure that our crossover is fitting in nice and easy. And you check it on the other one too. And if you want to be able to spin it, make sure it's definitely seated in. So we'll start by putting this on just on the head. So now again, you have your upper left will go where the O2 sensor goes, and the lower left. It'll help if you put it on correctly. So now we can move these out to where we can get our crossover in. And I made that mark so I know I'm in deep enough over there. Now I know I'm fully seated. So now we can hook our springs up. So you don't need to have any kind of special spring tool, just a basic generic one that kind of look like a hanger that's been bent over. They're made to do the job once or twice, sometimes more. But that'll do it. Okay, with our six millimeter Allen hex bit, gonna remove this one bolt from the foot peg bracket. In the kit, you've got three washers. Two of them go on this side. One of them goes between the spacer and the foot peg bracket. So you want to make sure that you put that in there. So you got your washer here. Stick the bolt through. Put the spacer on. And get the washer on. With our six millimeter Allen hex bit. Just make it snug, and then we gotta go tighten up on the head first before we crank that down. So now we're gonna torque down our flange with our 12 millimeter socket. Final torque to 19 newton meters. Now we can torque down this one, 25 newton meters. Now we want to take this spacer from the kit, and you have to make sure that this top hat spacer that was in there is still in there. Then we're going to use the bolt from the kit and then the original washer and nut.
Now with our 12 millimeter wrench, our six millimeter Allen, just gonna snug that just a little bit. And we're gonna go tighten it at the exhaust flange. So now with our 12 millimeter deep socket, we can tighten these flange bolts. Do a final torque of 19 newton meters. Final tighten our rear mount. Got a six millimeter Allen. A 12 millimeter wrench. And 25 Newton meters. So after the exhaust is removed, we don't need this longer bolt anymore because the muffler used to take up that space. So we're gonna put a shorter bolt in there. So it looks better. We we'll start by removing this clip just use a little flathead or a pick, pry it out gently. You don't want to fly across the room. We can push this pin out. And you want to hold this because you don't want to lose the little ball bearing right in there. Take it apart. You have a little spring in there too that you don't want to lose. If you need to hold them in there in place, you can put a little grease on there. We'll put the shorter screw on and then we'll go put this on the bike and then we can put the foot peg back in. You want to make sure that this notch right here lines up with that hole. You put it in there. the shorter bolt in. We're going to use the nut that we took off originally. Put that on. Then using a six millimeter Allen and your 12 millimeter socket. Tighten it up. All right, you want to make sure your spring is in place there. I'm going to add a little grease to make sure the bearing stays in place. Good idea to lay down a towel below you where you're working in case you drop the bearing. It doesn't bounce across the floor. Make sure this clip is going so the tangs will go around the, the bracket, not the foot peg. Slide that in, push the pin in, make sure it's working. Get the clip. We'll do the same thing for the other side. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Make sure the pin is aligned, should go in. The nut on the back. Six millimeter Allen, your 10 millimeter socket. Make sure the bearing and the spring are in place. Make 
sure my clip is going the right way. When you put this on, make sure the bearing is in one of these slots here. If it's off that way or that way, it's just gonna pop the bearing right out. Get it in there, pin in. Get our clip on. Now we're gonna route our O2 sensor plug we want to round it up behind the frame, and then it's going to end up over here. This is the plug that they'll plug into in this little bracket that they mount onto. So, pull it up. Okay, so now this slides onto that little tab in there. And then this plug slides back into here. So now we're gonna route the right side up, comes up behind the frame. Comes out here. Plug it back in. Put that on there. And then we get this. Back in there. So now we want to put this Keep her back on. Screw in. Our T30. Remember, this is only plastic piece, so don't go crazy. Go do the other side. T30, Let's tighten that one up. So now we wanna slide cable guide here. Should end up so that your brake line ends up right in that pocket there. Slide this back into place. Using our T30, Just snug that up a little bit, and we get this screw in again with the T30. one of 
line up. So now we want to put a clutch cable retainer clip that can place there. And you got another one down lower. Now we can put the side cover on. You just want to line up these three with these three grommets here. And if you're off a little bit, you can actually push these grommets straight through. So you wanna be careful. If it's not going in, it's only plastic. Don't push too hard. So before we put the tank forward, you want to make sure your rubber grommets are still in place because they can just fall off of here. So you want to make sure they're pushed all the way in. There's a little U-channel inside the tank here that has to line up on there. So as you come up on it, you want to make sure it's sliding in there. Now we just want to make sure this hole's lined up. Get our bolt through. Put the nut there. Ten millimeter wrench and our eight millimeter socket. Yep. I'm going to tighten this to 8 newton meters. Now we can reconnect our battery negative terminal. This is a number 3 Phillips or a 10 millimeter socket. And then we'll torque it down to four and a half Newton meters. Now we're going to put the seat on. We have a hook right here that goes underneath the, the tank. And then these two right here that go into this slot. So you want to be back enough that you can get them in there. Then when you can't lift it up, you know they're in. You just pop down the bottom. So before you fire this up, you want to make sure that these pipes are totally clean of any fingerprints and oil because when you fire it up, that will burn right into the stainless steel. So we like to use some uh, regular alcohol you can purchase at the drugstore. Get it on the rag and wipe it down. So now when you fire this up, you want to let it run for about 12 minutes or until the, the fans kick on. That way you know it's up to running temperature. And that will help normalize the O2 sensor readings to the fuel injection system for the new exhaust. Um, we really recommend that you have this remapped. You can either buy a, a drop-in map online 
through using Tune ECU or something of that effect. Um, but if you really want to get the best out of it, you want to have it dyno tuned. You just spent a lot of money on these pipes, uh, high flow filters, whatever you're, you're putting on this stuff. And then to not dyno tune it and get the most out of it, you know, that's up to you. But if you put it in a drop in map, it, it should run. It's just not going to be optimum. So dyno tuning is your best bet. So now we're going to fire this up and uh, give it a listen. You really want to do this in a well ventilated area because uh, after 12 minutes of running, it will definitely take all the oxygen out of your garage. So 